Today is the sacred and special and beautiful day of Krishna Janmashtami. It's the day that Bhagwan Krishna appeared on earth in the form of this divine being on earth in order to bring light to the darkness, in order to gift us, not only those who were alive at that time, but all of us since then, the sacred and divine darshan. And of course, tonight, we'll pray, we'll chant, we'll sing until late in the night, the time when Lord Krishna actually appeared in the darkness of night. But as we celebrate his appearance, as we celebrate the amazing gift that he gave us by coming here in form onto earth, we have to take into consideration the messages that he gave. What were his messages? What did he teach us? And how does it apply to our lives right now? Because his messages and his teachings were not applicable only to a battlefield in Kurukshetra thousands of years ago. They apply to every one of us, wherever we are, right here, right now. First and most importantly, his core teaching is to stand up and to do our duty, to fulfill our dharma. It's not a choice of action or spirituality, not a choice of action or prayer, but it's actually both. He taught us, mam anusmard yudhyacha. It means, remember me and fight the war. How simple. Remember God. Stay immersed in God consciousness and fight the war. Do your duty. Fulfill your dharma. Stand up. And stand up how? Fearlessly. Abhayam. Fearlessness is this core teaching of the Bhagavad Gita. But not fearlessness in a reckless sort of way. Not fearlessness in a lack of caring sort of way. Fearlessness in the awareness that we're being carried in the hands of the divine. Fearlessness the way that a child has in the arms of their mother. So we stand up. This is not the time to sit this one out. So many people these days are talking about just, just maintaining enough peace until this is over. Whether the this is COVID, whether the this is economic collapse, whether the this is separation, violence, crime, environmental destruction, all of that which we're seeing and suffering from. But Bhagwan Krishna said, no, not the time to sit this one out. No, Arjun. You don't get to just go into a cave and avoid the war. Fight the war. But how? Remembering me. Immersed in God consciousness. Immersed in love for God. In bhakti devotion. In jnana, wisdom. And in karma. Action. Fulfilling our duties but also with no attachment to the fruit of our labors. Just because I work sincerely, tirelessly, with love, with devotion, with wisdom, doesn't mean that what I want is going to happen. Doesn't mean that what I plan is going to happen. And this is where that other core, core teaching of the Gita comes in. Do your duty. Do your dharma. But with no attachment to the fruits. We must plant the seeds. Water them. 
shine the sun upon them. But what blossoms, what sprouts, what gives flower, what gives fruit? Not in our hands. We only have control over our own actions, our own thoughts, our own intentions, our own devotion. Not over that of others, not over the weather, not over the stock market, only over ourselves. And protect nature. Nature is sacred. One of my favorite teachings that he gives says, Patram pushpam phalam toyam, yo me bhaktya prayachati, tadaham bhaktyupratam, ashnami prayatatmanaha. And it means, very simply, that whatever is offered to me, offered to God, it's Lord Krishna speaking, whether it's a leaf, fruit, flowers, water, when it's offered with love, I accept it with love. But what I love about the teaching is that out of the four things he mentions, they're all natural. Leaves, flowers, fruit, water. He doesn't say whether you offer me a car, a bicycle, a two-wheeler, a four-wheeler, a flying machine. He doesn't say whether you offer me a mansion, a hut. Four things, all of which are nature, which to me means what to offer God? Nature. Why? Because, of course, God created nature. So why would we offer it back to God? The teaching can mean one thing and one thing only. Nature is sacred. Our leaves, our fruit, our flowers, our water, they are sacred, they are holy. They are that which is worthy of being offered unto God. So protect them, preserve them. And lastly, on this sacred day, there's so many teachings, so many exquisite teachings that books and courses and degrees are rooted just in these teachings. But I'll give just one more. On the beautiful day that Bhagwan Krishna came on earth, when we want to give him something, some gift, some something, what does he tell us? He tells us, Yat karoshi dashnasi, yaj jahoshi dadasiyat, yat tapasyasi konteya, tat kurushwa madarpanam. It means, whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you perform, whatever you give, whatever you offer, Everything you do, offer it to me. So what does Lord Krishna want from us? Everything. Every breath, every minute, every action, every thought, every word. In love, in devotion, in surrender, in purity, in action. Fearless action. Action with wisdom, gyan. Action with bhakti, devotion. Action surrendered to the divine as a tool, a vehicle, a vessel of the divine here on earth. And in his own words, it's the best, the best gift we can offer him. So... So much love to all of our family across the world on this sacred and holy day of Krishna Janmashtami, when we offer our love, our devotion, our surrender at the feet of Bhagwan Krishna. And we pray that may our devotion be like that of Mirabai, such that in heart, 
in mind, in body. May we truly just become one with him.